Hello and welcome to the final round coverage of the 2022 River City Open. This is round three lead card for MPO. We are here at Brewer Park. It is the 17th of July for this particular event and everything comes down to this point. We had some blazing hot scores from the field on the perfect Saturday. Moving day we had lots of movement and we are left with these four competitors starting with Aaron Gossage who is from Grand Junction, Colorado. And through two rounds, he's at neg 29. Chandler Fry from Olympia, Washington. Michigan favorite, he shreds every time he's here. He's pretty good, yeah. if you have heard about him. We have Chris Clemens, who has officially reclaimed the course record at neg 16. That's pretty good, if I say so myself. Nicholas Gill, man, a pro on the rise. He's won over 10 tournaments this year in the MPO division. Yeah, he's really kind of had his surge at the beginning of this year. He's been playing really well. I'm excited to have him on the card again. It's been a while. And we're going to start off with hole one, 274 feet, 84 meters. Where the drone is going right now, you want to throw a right of that first tree that it swerved around, or you want to go up and over the bushes on the left. There is OB on that walking path on the left side as well. So if you leaked it too far to the left, you could be in trouble. But I'm pretty sure with the elite level of this card, I don't think that's going to be a problem. All right, I'm here we super are. excited Five to watch Chris Clemens. I know he was on the open. initial first round, Final but the lefty, I want to see how he attacks the course, off. especially We've after shooting next 16. Mm -hmm. like it's it's round one, he, uh, I don't know if he just hadn't practiced a whole lot, but uh, he had said that the guys on his card really showed him a lot of lines that he wasn't necessarily aware of or didn't think about. And I so see. round two, he executed those lines, and we'll see if he can re-execute them here in round three. There's the play I'm looking for on this hole. A little bit higher. This hole, actually, you got to throw it a little softer than you might think, otherwise you are ending up OB. If you hang it up high, you let it, let it hold and fall down. Fortunately for this event, there was dangers of thunderstorms almost all day Saturday. They were saying it was going to start thunderstorm at 7 in the morning, and it wasn't going to stop. And as we got closer and closer to midnight, that kept pushing back further and further. Still looks like there might be rain in this round, so they came prepared for it, but we were very fortunate to like avoid almost all of that storm. That's Michigan weather for you. Yeah, just wait five minutes and you change. You could get paid really well to be a meteorologist and never be right. <laughs> Chris going to go with that forehand harp, and that checks out. Yep, that's nice. Looking and at the lead card the right now, two strokes Michigan, separating Aaron and Chandler, two Lakes more Discs. strokes from Chandler to Chris and Nicholas. So we're on a pretty tight race here. It is definitely windier today than it was yesterday as well, so that will come into play a little bit, making, making it a little more difficult to go repeat on that 16 down. Great height right there. Soft landing. Awesome. Yep. Nice little zone shot from Nick. I think that's a zone. Yeah, it looked like it. The way it hit and landed for sure. cash money green squares he had a lot of those yesterday he's looking to do it again today looks like everybody's going to start out with a green square today yeah this is this is looking pretty promising so far aaron i still tapping taking a look at the scores for round three and we not everything played under par today like it did yesterday a couple holes that did not but hole one did play as the easiest as expected i i would at least expect for this particular course as we head in over to hole two which plays as the second easiest a lot of people were able to make the proper adjustment for this hole it's only 312 feet but it's a little tricky the most open gap is on the left you can throw a forehand uh your big danger is a big flare skip away from it you can, most likely backhands will uh kind of nuzzle up to the basket a little more efficiently yep there is like that cluster of skinny bushy like trees on the left of that fair or left of that green and i think if you hit that you're almost always like 25 35 feet away so that's a good kind of like aiming spot if you hit that you're going to be doing pretty good and that's a great throw that's the that's the one you want to do right there that was aaron up first this is chandler now he's gonna go with a backhand with his passion i think it's his passion maybe it's a slower just than that hmm. as it he moves sails fast, it. So maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> never mind it's the passion <laughs> got chris who's gonna throw a backhand lefty it's almost hard to think of chris as a lefty because he throws forehand so powerfully and so consistently that he just kind of comes across or plays as a righty 
mm-hmm. backhand player traditionally because he just that's his normal shot. So Nick going backhand. This looks a little low. Yep, it's going to choke up early. Not what he wanted to do there, but it should be an easy layup from there. Maybe a big long run from here. Definitely didn't want to start with a bogey. Yeah, don't you can't bogey the second easiest hole in the day. There was, in fact, one really big putt from Chris Clemens and one ace in the day by Nick Green. Nick Green ace this hole. And apparently, that's what it says here. That's awesome. I don't know if I believe No, I do believe it. <laughs> oh, Chandler just a touch low. Not able to quite match Chris's big putt. Aaron, nice and close here. Looks like Aaron's the one who wants to start off hot today. I already corrected one of his holes that he missed yesterday. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so now 16's in play. It's almost hard to get ahead of yourself, but the reality is on this course and at these elite players, like that's actually kind of true. It's like if you've birdied the first two, then 18 yep. is still in play. In minus round one, the rounds two and three, the weather was relatively calm. Mm-hmm. Much better. 382 hole three, what do we got going on, Clayton? 382, 83, we got that middle gap to punch. We saw last round that a lot of people are going back kind of on the outside, letting that take that wide gap out there and and float on down. Um, I personally choose that, that forehand that flips up flat and just pushes the edge. It's way better to be on the left side and punching out versus getting caught up on the right side, in my opinion. Yeah, the right side, if you get too deep, it's just like you can't roll her out. You can't go over the top out. It, you are just in the worst position possible. Aaron got caught early trying to make the correction this round. Looks like he stumped this a little harder. Maybe too hard. Whoa. That is the same exact spot I finished all three rounds on every throw. Oh, my. Not a good spot back there, huh? You're just pushing it flat. It's better than the right, though, and he will have a putt. Chris. Super smooth. Yeah, just nice little lefty hyzer. And nuzzle. Nuzzle, don't roll away. Heck yeah. We take those. Going wide left. I don't know. Maybe he wants to go back over the water spigot. That was a pretty good, <laughs> pretty good to have last round. Nope, he went around everything and got punished for it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just a little early there. Cut Catches that long grass and gets choked up real quick. Really a good line. Nick just has a lot of sidearm power. It wouldn't surprise me if he went wide left. Okay. Oh, no. he's going inside. Through the gap. I like that. That's a, that's a smart play. This a little is, high. Holy cow. Speaking of power. <laughs> he's going to be on the edge there. Might still have a putt, honestly. Chandler from range, not able to connect on that one, but he's going to be on a 15, 20 foot comeback putt. Nick quite obstructed there. You can see from the back angle. Mm. Just over the top. Too strong. Nick is another one of those hometown heroes on the rise. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier. He has really been putting in the work, and he has been having some spectacular rounds to start this year. Aaron just a touch high and left there. Had a run at it, though. Yep. Tough spot, though. And Chandler makes that look easy. Fair enough. He certainly does. This putt is fluid, very smooth, nice and easy. Nick getting a par there. Chris with the birdie. He's going to go three for three. Yep, my tennis playing brother. <laughs> and we got Aaron at a par as well. And that's going to wrap up hole three as we come to the signature hole of the course. Great Lakes Disc, located in Grand Rapids, Michigan, is a fully stocked retail disc golf store that fulfills all of your disc golf needs. We carry all of the major manufacturers, accessories, and offer player and event sponsorship, along with tournament payout assistance. To learn more about Great Lakes Disc, visit greatlakesdisc.com. All right, hole four. We're back, 795 feet. Landing zone about 350, you'd say? 350 is the landing zone for sure. Yep. 
Go give ahead. or take two feet. Yeah, I mean, if you land two feet short, you're not gonna have a shot. You land five feet past, you're not having a shot. It's a small <laughs> it's landing a space. Real small space. <laughs> Hole is playing pretty difficult today, as to be expected, but much better than it has in the past previous rounds. But once you get to that first landing spot, you wanna get on top of the hill. And then from there, you have a whole nother hole that you have to play uh, down this gap. It's a lots of plinko trees in your way. Very common, you'll see the left gap is a little more open and the right gap, if you go into like five fairways, really open. Um, I'm interested to see in future years how players play that, especially if we continue not to have any OB separating those two yep. um, because really if you're short on the hill not too far across the fairway there you have a really wide open left gap for a forehand but for sure we'll just have to see how these guys do it these are both good drives to start sit and maybe he, i spoke too soon but it's still a good drive it's what you want yeah i mean him if you told him would you like to get a different throw he'd be like no i want to do that i just wanted to be 10 feet shorter and yep I don't want to be under the log. Yeah. This looks really promising. If it sits, sit. That's really close. Yeah, that's one of those things. It's almost too far up the hill because then you start, you know, standing on an angled footing. Yep. I want to say this is a force from Nick. That could be really good. Oh, my goodness. No. Stop. No, you. Stop. Well, I see the spotter here reminding me, thank you for everyone that comes out and helps makes this event special. Spotters help make the flow go really well, as well as us appreciating all the work that you guys do, as well as the tournament directors and all the I'm staff duck. members. <laughs> Don't have to get out of the way on that one. That was a smart play. And that was a really tight gap, a really finessed zone shot over the top of the hill. He's going to have a chance at his birdie. Chris... Up, yep. Try. Another smart play. You cannot get too aggressive there. Yeah, that's that's a fine play. Aaron, who kind of went with roller last round, is going to do the same thing here that again. That is the aggressive play. Too straight up and down. Yeah. yeah, and as I mentioned last round, there's just I feel like there's just too many roots slash trees to consistently be able to measure or like attack with a roller like all the time. It's just too much luck involved yeah looks like Chandler got caught up a little too high that's a common miss as well when you come over that hill you try to go up and over the hill and in doing so you kind of nose up you really want to just barely get over the hill trying to push distance that's the hard part is you have to choose the right disc uh, the stability really matters on that throw Nick kind of out of position and now in position that was sick sidearm power see the big crowd there there's two of them right now there's one on the left side you see of chris and there's one on the right side as well following the chase card got chris clemens here throwing a turnover it looks like it's turning over a little early though he's going to be short of the basket big jump up yep he already made one earlier he's got another one in him mm. unlucky that was the first mistake i've seen him have in a while yeah a lot of Plinko. Still can save his par. He's not even close to being in that range of being worried about bogey. And Aaron also having a chance to get up there, and he's going to hit an early tree, and he'll have a long putt now. Let's see what Chandler's got. He's got some form of a putter. He's going to throw it real hard, but nose up, and it's just going to settle right by the basket. It's a high-skill approach shot. We take those. Got Aaron here. Long putt, just a touch short. Almost was able to save the birdie. Let's see if Chris can save his. Similar distance here. And Oof. Two for two off the basket, just inches short. And that means the only one walking away with a birdie here will be the guy who's the most out of position off the tee and off the approach. Unbelievable, actually. He kind of joked about that. He's like, yeah, you guys didn't know that uh, out of position, out of position, really long forehand shot. That's that's the way to do it. And they're like, apparently it is. Now we know. One more tap in left with Aaron here. Yeah, and they're really not losing too many strokes. The, the whole play is as 4.9. So just a little under par. They're really not losing too many strokes in the field. Um, taking a five there. But heading into hole five, as you talked about, this is kind of the stretch where you really need to start converting. 
Yeah, this is a par four that you want to get. What do we got going on here, Clayton? Par four, um, simple backhand, hyzer, flip it up fly if you want a little bit more distance. The true distance play, if you had it, if you're a psycho, is a huge pushing sidearm. Try to get it through this gap, maybe get a little extra space. Chris with the backhand lefty might be able to do a little extra. A little time will tell right here. Um, and then the approach shot, typically you're wanting it to go left to right because it's going to push forwards, and if it does roll back, it's going to get caught up in those roots on the right side. I could be wrong, but I almost think Chris's forehand power is bigger. Than his backhand. Yeah. I mean, if you've never watched Chris Clemens play in person, you should take the time to do it. It is wild. And that right there, what Nick just did while I was saying that, is about as perfect of a drive as you can get. No, that was insane. <laughs> that is so far up there. That was so far. That is super smooth. You're totally right. And, oh, my Lord, you're going to be up by Nick, aren't you? Oh, my Lord, he's up by Nick. Up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's up by Nick, and he still hit a tree 40 feet short of him. All right, can we go three for three? Aaron trying to pump. Oh, this so looks low. So low. That was really but that's low. pretty standard for him. Honestly, look at the distance he's still got wow. five feet off the ground. And that's right in position for him to throw his forehand. Yep. Zone forehand from there is going to be ideal. Got one more. Chandler kind of missing the drive on this last round. He's trying to make the correction. This looks like a good correction to me. Yeah. Oh, miss it. Yes, keep going. Big skip. Yes. Everybody. That's about four perfect drives, if I'm being honest. I mean, Aaron, you could say, was a little low, but the reality is he's in, right, you can see right here, perfect position to kind of attack for his. He can flex it flat. He knows that the skip's not going to be crazy. Oh. And he hits the tree. <laughs> There's literally one <laughs> Plinko slash guardian, not Plinko, guardian tree in front of this basket, and he just squared it. Oh, two for two. Two for two. Oh, he's got a putt. He's that, that was looking so good. Now, Chandler, they just showed you. Don't don't hit it. Yeah. Don't hit that tree. What the heck is I need to message him and ask him what this, this disc is. This thing is so stable. It's unbelievable. Like, I get that he's throwing it really soft, which makes it look more stable. But, I mean, he's throwing it pretty hard a couple times, and it's been beefy. Maybe that's the most stable cap wrap that he found in a batch. It could be. Oh my lord, Nick hits the same guard. Guys, there's a big old gap. Yeah, right. Right, right or left of it. <laughs> right or left, either one. Just not that. It's about a disc length, too. Nick, oh, an inch short. This is one that he really wants back. Hole five is playing as the third easiest hole on the day. This is one you really need to get. Aaron, trying to get himself back on track, does so beautifully there. That's what he needs. Chris also wanted to keep himself on track. Oh, another one just off the basket, a little too low. That uphill must have gotten him a little bit. Wow. Chandler, the only one not to hit the that tree, is going to have an easy tap in for his green square. I'm surprised, honestly. Those are the best drives that I've seen in a I while. know. That was nuts to see the four best drives on this hole I think I've ever seen on one card and only have two people walk away with birdies is wild. But that's why you play the game and don't assume because that's anything can happen. That one guardian tree can mess anyone up. As I say that, we're going to move into hole six, par four, 579 feet. Talk about guardian trees. There's a lot of them here. We saw Kyle Klein hit one early. You want to get past those first two kind of mandatory trees. They're not really mandatory, but you usually want to split them. It's the most open gap. You want to be on the left side of these kind of big trees of the fairway that will open up the biggest opening for you to get up to the basket you can try to push through them for a little extra distance if you're feeling risky uh, but then from there it's just an upshot either forehand or backhand they're both open gaps something stable onto this basket sitting on a quarter way up the hill yeah it's got a backstop and we take backstops in disc golf we love <laughs> backstops huge shout out i don't know if i said this in the last couple of rounds you kind of see that tree that looks like it's been ripped apart um the tuesday before the event the tree or monday before the event the tree i don't know if it got struck by lightning or what but it broke and yep. there was a tree limb covering the entire fairway Ooh, bad kick for Is that the same tree you're talking about yeah right that there? tree that the one that 
uh, Chandler Fry, so nice, has pointed <laughs> out for us. But uh, it just was covering and blocking the entire fairway perfectly in the land zone, almost completely unrunnable. It was definitely affecting the hole. And the Parks Department and the tournament staff, I think, worked together to kind of communicate that need. And the Parks Department was able to get that all cleaned up within by Wednesday. It was really impressive and appreciate that effort. And we love our communities and our Parks Departments working with the disc golf community trying to make you the, know the park's better the disc golf community here in Grand rapids gets better and stronger and more together every year yeah so we love to see that we thank you to the department who you know came out and did that i was actually out there on the day it was raining and he was chainsawing a bunch so uh, it's good to go out there and see that chandler on his upshot wasn't happy with his drive after the early kick but he is going to be in circle so not not too mad about the no. second shot opportunity aaron in a prime position here this is literally a perfect drive in my mind outside of like going for a ridiculous roller that parks. Yep, no, that's nice. And then Nick had a great drive. I love that he played the inside gap on the, on, on the right side the whole way through. I don't know if it's on purpose or not, but the disc flipped up flat and just carried. Great yeah. throw. Nice and easy. Hole six, surprisingly, playing right around the middle of the pack. Playing as the ninth. Uh, hardest hole, which would make it the tenth easiest, and these guys are like, you say it's what now? Because this is this this is easy yeah, this for is these easy. guys. This is a momentum hole. Yeah, I think that initial gap kind of gets people. Yep. And there's lots of danger on the approach shot too. If you're not as far, like these guys were so far forward that that kind of low ceiling and uphill kind of comes out of play. Yep. If you're really far back in the short pad area, that kind of comes back in play because you kind of have to shot shape around those things. But they were really far up there, except for Chandler, who had the back uh, route, which is really just miss two really skinny plinko trees. And if you do that, then you're fine. You still made it all the way up there for a putt. Yep. And we have green square, green square, green square. And Nick, please don't make me mess you up on this, but I think we have a fourth green square. Phew. Let's go. If he had missed that after I watched it go in when I filmed it the first time, I would have been shocked and awed, but he made it. So we're good. Hole seven, 613 feet, 187 meters, another par four. Clayton, what is the game plan for this? Game plan for this, and it's been for them, just push it straight down the fairway. Push it straight down the fairway. If you end up on the right, that's fine. If you end up on the left, you're gonna have a nice solid uh, sidearm approach shot. Kind of takes that mulberry tree at the end of this fairway out of the question. That tree on the left with this small gap can make the upshot a little tricky. You see a lot of people throwing a flex mid-range or buzz backhand. You know, I've seen a lot of disc craft players lately, so it's kind of the disc that comes in mind. Well, I mean, they're ma they manufacture here, so I, that's not too surprising, right? Yeah, no. So we'll see a low push from Aaron Gossett. She's been doing this all weekend. With that very clear nuke. Yep. Hey, buddy, we've seen you before. Right there, actually. It's in the same spot. <laughs> I bet we'll see Chandler throw his as well. Oh, man, would you look at that. It's like I was there. <laughs> Ooh, this is this That's, is left. That could work out. It needs to, okay, never mind. I mean, oh, yeah, good job. <laughs> that was clean. Yeah, those uh, the trees in the island over there, they fall every, once every year, I feel like. One of the trees does, and it becomes a little a bit little more easier. clear. Yeah. Only for the top level pros, for like a beginner like me, it's just, it's impossible. It's, it's, <laughs> it might as well just be a brick wall for me. <laughs> Got Chris Clemens here, gonna go with the forehand again, because it's kind of his power, and he wants to end up on the left side, so it kind of all matched up, but he's turned oh. this one over. Wow, that thing's cooking through the woods. Thankfully, not OB this year. That's right. We'll see if he has any out from there because I doubt he does. But this is the ideal spot right here. He's trying to go wide and skip it in. This might be a little too sharp of an angle. That was too wide. You're yeah. right. That's the trick with it. If you want to beat those mulberry low branches, you just got to keep it low. And so he did that, but just a little too wide. Oh, Nick is going up. He's, got, he's aiming for the tree. Hit the tree. Oh, hit something. Doesn't hit the tree. Wow, rare. Kind of a misfire there maybe a little bit, but he's still in circle. Gonna have a comeback putt, and looks like Chris didn't have any out. He's just gonna pitch up to the center of that fairway and have himself an easy four probably. Oh, he's going up and over. I'm a little surprised by that. Oh, never mind. he's really close. I mean, yeah, that's a really good shot too. <laughs> Got 
Chris. It's kind of just, you know, do Chris things. Harp it right by the basket. Chandler with his chance for a three. And a green square. Oh, no. Lots of chains. Most of them on the amp side. Wasn't able to catch it. Nick, Nick. with the band. Goodness. So close. So it looks like we're going to have one green square out of this. That's kind of surprising. Let me look at the holes real quick. It plays as the sixth easiest. So definitely these guys losing some strokes probably to the leading field missing this hole. It is a surprise. Lots of spectators. Mm -hmm. Final day. A little pressure. These guys are all tight. Mm -hmm. You know, and score. And I will say for just we're you know looking at the chase card scores right now they are all shooting really well they're all looking at that six to eight down to the front nine kind of scores so these guys are kind of made, i don't know if it's in their head at all but it's something for them to be aware of if they're checking it and so heading to hole eight i think there's that pressure is coming down the you know that message board saying hey we got to start converting we can't have any more misses and hole eight is one that you really need to get for these guys 420 feet you can go back in by the trees on the right side if you're a righty player uh you just kind of bring that big skip across the fairway or across the green excuse me if you happen to come in with a large uh, driver but aaron really likes this forehand play which makes the green a little better the only problem we have right now is that it is a right to left so this is pushing his disc down and not letting it come back it makes sense Chandler's gonna try to fix that he's popping on a nuke out there yeah probably gonna try to keep it lower yep over by the trees he's gonna need to miss him yep does here's the skip you were talking about dead grass yep. nice we'll take those perfect Good read of the wind. Another Discraft player. We have a lot of those guys at this event. I think we have wait, we have three of them here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty. Nick is technically on Discraft Underground, I believe. But I, I will say this. He is on the rise in search. I would not be surprised if that changes soon. Yeah, I encourage Discraft to reach out to that guy. He is a <laughs> quality player, nice guy. And Chris, we like him too, but probably he's probably good with where he's at right now. A little dynamic action over there. Yeah, he's, he, w he wants to be a little different, yeah. you know, a little from the card today. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to throw some of the so – that's a felon's dynamic, right? A felon. I don't know if he throws a felon at all. Uh, I feel like that would be key in his bag as a sidearm thrower. I, I would assume so, <laughs> but you just never know. Some people have some crazy bags. Yeah, you're totally right. Like some people are like, oh, that's a Chally, and they're like, no, that's not. That's a. They'll, they'll name some disc from 40 years ago, and you're like, what? what the heck? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. I will say that's a like when I ask them from time to time, like what disc is that, or they start talking about it. Sometimes the words that come out of their mouth is wild. They're just like, yeah, this is a first run challenger from blah blah blah, and I'm like, how'd you even get that? Let alone find out that that's what you wanted to putt with. I feel like a lot of people are happy to give pros their discs. That, that could be yeah. true. That could be true. <laughs> if it's getting thrown by somebody that's quality, <laughs> and they know that they've never thrown that disc that's quality my before. Disc. Yeah, that's my disc. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> hole nine, last one of the front nine, 287. The, really the most treacherous part about this hole is the green itself. Very slanted, very sloping, and very quick. Most plays will be right hand back in, and it's going to get a big skip towards that low hanging branch and obstruct most putts. Uh, I think the safer play is to go a little wider than you think, but we'll see what these guys do. And Chris might go back in too. Kind of match the hill a little better. Chandler going to be just outside circle, but more level with the basket, a little bit above it. Yeah, he's in a good place. That's fine. He can putt from a knee. He's pretty good. Nick, this looks a little inside. Mm. This needs to spike. Qu oh, maybe it's kind of floating. It's going to be a similar spot. Yeah, a little more open than Chandler. Yep, he will not have to deal with that tree above his head. This is what I wanted to see. How far does a lefty or a sidearm have to push on the left side? This looks really wide. I mean, inside. Mm. Yeah, just lays it up a little shorter. I think he was worried about getting into that tree, skinny little blocker tree. It's so well positioned for it to, to just be a pain in the butt. Aaron, trying to repeat. Look at how wide that is. Trying to repeat, settle. 
I think he's got this whole figured out. This guy probably watched Crew 42 before he played. Yeah, he did. I love that. <laughs> Coming up, like, you're the Crew 42 guy. No, he didn't do that. <laughs> he didn't do that, but hopefully next year he will. He's like, I watched 2020, 2021. Uh -huh. I've seen it all. This hole has never changed. Chris was right there taking a big risk running that downhill, but hits the basket. It's going to be right by it. No roll away for him. Yeah, risk is a must for this guy. He knows he's down. He's looking at the scorecard, 31, 34. He's at 30. He has to. Yeah. It's a must. And I think for, like, guys like Chandler and anyone on the chase card that's kind of seeing where Aaron's at and are trying to catch up to him, Nick just a touch low too, but they're kind of realizing they're running out of holes. Mm -hmm. Like With nine to come and they're all very birdieable, um, you just kind of know that Aaron's – probably going to execute down the stretch yeah. for a good chunk of those which means you have to get your birdies now not later i think if you study the scorecard from the day previous you notice that aaron missed one of the next nine holes yeah as so. so you're <laughs> kind of just like hoping for a little luck here and you're not wishing someone to play poorly but you're kind of hoping that the door gets you know, cracked open a little bit and give you a chance taking a look at the scores here lots of green no red today no. Uh, which we love to see we're going to see if these guys can keep it going on the back nine. Thanks to our Patreon family for supporting us. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Click that little notification bell so you can know when we post another tournament. And Clayton, got to thank you for here uh, for coming out today and excited to do the back nine with you. Thanks for having me. See you soon.